Baja 1000 is the granddaddy of all off-road races. This was an extreme sport before anyone knew what the word was. They were going to start in Ensenada on the Pacific coast of Baja Peninsula, and it'll end 1,054 miles later in La Paz. The time limit was 43 hours. This is man against the elements, man against machine and nature, and usually the Baja beats you. The last three years, we were fortunate enough to win that class twice. I started off my career in New Zealand competing in a lot of simple hill climbs on gravel roads and learning driver control. The guy is so incredible. The things he can do behind the wheel, probably doesn't even know why or how he does them, but he just does them. He's just a natural. Put me up against those millions, man. I've got nothing compared to those guys. Those guys got the full-on machine shop. We have a little photo studio. We bought some cruddy tools. Somehow, something brought us knuckleheads together. I've known about the Baja 1000 since I can remember. I was a little kid. My brother and I, we used to have this little cruddy ATC and we'd pretend that we were racing the Baja 1000. We've been talking about our whole life. Why not just grow a set of stones and say you're going to do it? That's what it's going to take, you know? You just got to say you're going to do it. This is a real major world event. You're going to see what these warriors really go through. We have mountains, dry lake beds, pine forests, beaches. We have motorcycles. We have ATVs. We have vehicles that are worth $15,000. Vehicles are worth $2 million. At any given race, we're lucky if we get 42 43% finished. It's not about how fast you can go around any one corner or any one mile. It's about who can get to the finish in a thousand miles. You get tired and you get hot racing against the clock and the pressure's on and it's going to be absolutely crazy. We're in for a hellish ride. You never conquer the Baja. Baja conquers you. And how's it going, Adam? Not too bad. We're just getting all this last little stuff together. The truck looks great. Rod's a pretty awesome guy. I learned a lot from Rod. Rod's, you know, been very gracious, you know, over the years, helped me out with my racing, giving me pointers. It's pretty cool to be able to work for him and now drive with him. It's like a dream come true. People ask, how long does it take to prep a race car? The question is, how much time do you have? I can work on this car for six months and keep making it better and better and better, and finding things I don't like, keep fixing them. This year in the Baja, we're racing a class called Stock Mini. We start here with the FJ Cruiser. We got window nets here, a big safety cage in here. We got bars here, we've got bars in the room. We've got this fresh air system because there will be a lot of dust out there. We've got a GPS system on board. We've got what we call a fuel cell. We've also added quite a large shock and reservoir package. We have here one of our chase trucks, pretty much a rolling workshop. We've got an engine, a transmission, axles, steering racks, front suspension, rear suspension. The whole underside of an FJ Cruiser is in the back of this truck right now. I think we have our act together. We got a lot of good guys that are really into this race, and we got a lot of spare parts. We want to go to win, obviously. I mean, not a lot of people go there for anything else. Damn! Daddy's on fire! <laughs> we only have a week until we leave for Mexico and we still have to get this thing inspected. I was hanging out with some buddies and I'm like, hey, you know what, it'd be kind of cool to run the FJ. But, um, oh my God, it's just absolutely brutal. We're out there running the big dogs. They have these multi-million dollar budgets and we're working on my personal vehicle getting through there. Then we go through and we check out. I'm like, how bad could this be? We look at the results from last year out of everyone that started the race in this class, not a single car finished. No one. No one made it through. I haven't seen my kids for weeks. All our wives are just like, what are you guys doing? How can you spend so much time down there? They just don't get it, man. It's like, you know, climbing Everest. Why the hell would you want to do that? To do it. We got to get it teched through score that the roll cage passes all their requirements. 
We got to get their stamp of approval before we can raise. We're so freaking far behind that if something goes wrong at Tech tomorrow, I have no idea how we're going to be able to fix it. My prediction is that we will pass, we'll get the stamp of approval, or we're in a lot of trouble. Here comes the dude, one dude that's got to tech all the cars. We check for wall thickness, not a tubing it's in the car, all the gussets, overall safety of the vehicle. Well, I'm nervous about what the hell he's doing in there, man. I don't even know what the heck's going on. This middle tube's not welded. It's not welded all around the tube, you can see it. the metal dust. It goes right to the cracks. And this is a magnet. We're at tech right now. We thought we'd just breeze through, man. They're pulling out all these scopes and prods and all those crap. <laughs> We're sitting here a little bit freaked out. I mean, I think we did it all by the rules, but um, the Still dude's wearing rubber gloves, man, for real. I just saw him put his finger in the exhaust pipe and ask him to honk the horn. <laughs> you need a firewall in here. Oh, man. If this ruptured, all the fuel's going to go that way. Yeah. That's and that's not good. That. Your diagonals are supposed to come to the junctions. From that corner down to here, uh -huh. mm -hmm. or vice versa. Okay. From this corner down to the bottom. Well, I mean, the first time we built a cage. Over an inch off. Yeah. Everything comes to a screeching halt over an inch. Oh, dude. Let's get back, man. we got to tear this thing apart. Okay, take your radio, hang it out here where you can hear the, what's going on. Start unloading your truck. Pop your gate down. Okay, Ryan, go ahead and run scenario two. Get your toolbox untied. You're gonna get a couple tires down. Tires first, tools second. Okay, do your pit stop. Up the hood, look underneath the car. See anything driven, see anything funny? So everybody's checked underneath the car, everybody's checked everything. You're gonna have to drop the jack so he can crank them tight. All right, we'll do another one. Okay, Ryan, run scenario three. I hear a left rear flat. You still gotta look the car over. You still gotta pop the hood. You still gotta look underneath the car. Clear, clear. Hold up. Three, three. That was good, quick thinking on the, the lug wrench to get in that one, but we forgot it. We can't do that anymore. Never take tools out of the race vehicle. Right. And, and if you do, you just, communicate you to everybody and let them know that that's where it came from. No, you just don't do it. Seriously, you just learned what happened. Right. You've sent that car off now with no lug wrench. We're done. We head to Mexico tomorrow. We got the cage done. We got the cage. Limit straps are done. Limit straps are in. Exhaust is done. Where's your pee going? Dude, we'll have time before the race to drill pee holes. I'm just wondering where you're planning on it going. Dude, I don't even want to think about it. Since we don't have enough driver to switch out, we gotta, we gotta wear catheters and run them down our pant leg and drill holes in the floorboard and run it out so we can piss. I don't want to pee on a catheter down my leg, man. That's just horrifying. I just don't want to. I borrowed the suit from my dad, and I didn't. I wouldn't piss in my dad's suit. So. I think you, you're gonna want us drinking water to stay conscious. Yeah. That water's got to come out at some point. <clears throat> Are you the catheter girl? I am the catheter girl. So how does it work? Do we have to all stand up here to get measured? What's going on no, with the tape measure? All measure the same. Do yep. these come in different colors? No. Flavors? No, sorry. How do they stay on? Really simple instructions. Okay. Slip it over, go straight out, down your pant leg, drill a hole in the bottom, and pee on the race course, man. in pretty good shape for getting out this morning. So, you guys have done a great job getting prepped for this. No worries. Here we go. No backing out now, you know. Venimos de la Habana del Puerto de 
esa plaza Hoy conocí la hermana que tiene Nicolás Hoy vengo de La Habana, del puerto de Japón Hoy conocí la hermana que tiene Don Simón Conas, conas, conas y Nicolás Lo mucho que te quiero y el más bajo que me das Si quieres, si puedes, si no ya lo verás Ay, qué bonito baila la mujer de Nicolás What's your plan for tomorrow then? What do you want to do? I need to pre-run the first 30 miles of the race course. I need to go Ensenada Ovos. I'd just hate to see something really bad happen in the car before we even get to To race. <laughs> race. Being stupid, you mean? <laughs> that it's a, the uh, potential I mean, of us breaking and doing something stupid's out there. Yeah. Um, if we broke a suspension piece, I'd rather have it break tomorrow instead of next Thursday. Yeah. So, well, where's the... Yeah. Where do you make that call? I don't know. So what do we want to do? You want to go into town? Let's light a fire, Jim. Let us throw it in there. Oh, that's a lot of rust. Uh -huh. The official fireball in the gas bucket. Go, 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 go. We've got ignition. Oh, what a fight! Lift it up. Aimed up. <laughs> That's quinky ding. Yeah, why don't we put those away? That's the heat. <laughs> that was hot. We're on the course, how are you? You feel alright? I'm fine. fine. It's great, it's fun. What I did Thank notice, Ryan, right if you run first gear up too high and go into second, it's not good for the synchros or the clutch yeah, or yeah, anything. So, like... so then I ran, I ran first gear to get me out of the corner, bang second, yeah. and went. Yeah. Oh, it was fantastic. I was quite amazed how quick it is. A nice ride. That was a good run. You know, it's a, it's a good shakedown. that thing leans over now without the sway bar? Yeah, it's weird. It is weird. It sucks on the road. I felt like we were going to tip over on the highway. <laughs> um, if you look straight down the road, I am on the dirt waving to you. How you doing? That one is fine. So far, so good, man. That felt really fun. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> oh, man. It felt way better than I thought it ever would have.
light bar off. Really, really sucks. Man, I'm just pissed as hell. Did you roll it? Yeah. They know you. They know this happened. No, they don't know what happened. But I'm gonna get it together. It's fine. It'll start right back up. I can get back out onto the road. I'll let them know. Thanks, man. Okay. I'm gonna start a race with a rolled car. It's gonna create so much work. What do you want first? Bad. Bad news is your boy flipped the truck. Okay. The good news is it landed on its wheels and everybody's okay. Right. It was uh -huh. spinning like donuts. Right, right. And he just spun out. Hello. Russ, we're heading back to uh, your camp. Um, our practice is done for the day. We got a lot of work to do on the car. Right on. See you in a bit. Bye. All right, we're running the uh huh. God, that was a weird feeling, man. Yeah. Disbelief, mostly. This is happening, right? It yep. did happen. This is happening, and it did happen. But everybody's alive, nobody's hurt, and that's what really matters. Hey! I put it on its lid pretty good. Yeah, I just feel like a total douche. We got so much work to do tonight and tomorrow. It's just like a total nightmare. Okay, hon, I'll give you a shout in the morning. I'm surprised it's running actually. Holy crap. <laughs> it busted the battery box out? Yeah. It's a bad day to be Kevin. I guess we're forced to run no front windshield, right? I don't think we're forced to. Right, so if you want a windshield, I'd probably send somebody to San Diego to get a windshield. <laughs> oh my God. Did today really happen? Please would like to start the rider drivers meeting for the 39th running of the Ducati score Baja 1000. Done a few of these now enough that it's not any different than a normal day of work. Nervous may come later, may not. We'll see. They are only racing a thousand miles today. No big deal. We have at this particular time 448 entries signed up for this event, which is by far the largest. This event, when it starts, it's, I hate to say it, but it's out of my control. It's in your hands. My body doesn't know what to do. My mind is going a thousand miles an hour. This is really happening. You're the person behind the wheel. You're either going to make it or break it. You've just got to pace yourself. We're going to be racing from noonish on Thursday through to midnight on Friday night before we get to the finish. It's not going to be a walk in the park. This is the most important off-road race in the world. It gets global attention. It's going to give you bragging rights for as long as you live. So you have to be professional. I love you. I love you too. It is a race. It's not worth your life or someone else's life. It's an experience. It's a one in a lifetime opportunity. So please, please pay attention. How you guys doing? Great. Hi, how you doing? How's it going? You guys all set? Yeah. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? How about you? 
I'll be all right. Just the first glimpse of what the necessary guys are doing. It's maybe what I did 35 years ago. There's many lessons to be learned in, in off-road racing. So they're learning lots of those lessons and they're not finished learning yet. <laughs> this is the most nervous I've been, I think, ever. It's like, I don't think I was this nervous before I got married. Just a Thursday drive, Friday drive, Saturday drive. I think we're doing good. We haven't got past yet, so as long as it stays that way, we, we got a chance at winning this thing. Whoa! Guys, we got a Yeah, I've had a good time. It's hard work catching and passing those other cars. Side. We're really slow right now. We're gonna make it up, man. We're gonna make it up on the highway. Whoa! Go, go, go! No problems? No, uh, you check all the tires in there? <laughs> that was great. Uneventful. Passed a lot of cars. Had a good time. right down the road.
the silt beds outside of Trinidad. Yeah. Dude, it was like a graveyard. Yeah, I heard. There were like 35 cars stuck. Yeah. Alright, that's a transport. Um, let me check the, uh, how that happened. Tranny food. I wonder if I got hit with the battery. I don't know. Yeah, we should check it, huh? How long has the millet been by? Uh, about five hours. Yeah. 10 o'clock. They went through here at 10? Yep. They're gonna stop all over that record if they finish. Take it steady. Yep. I've never felt so good giving that damn thing away, man. <laughs> oh. Copy that. We are just past checkpoint seven. Go slow after checkpoint seven. We'll be on your right. About 11 miles out. Uh on. -uh. Oh, mom. I'm so happy to get back in this bad boy, man. This feels great. All right, I'd kiss you, but you stink, babe. Windshield, please. Yeah, and there's a little, looks like the CDs are looking a little face too. So we went ahead and swapped in a brand new ECU and hopefully that solves it for a while. a mile or two outside of the pit and uh, the vehicle died again. Okay, so there are a lot more parts that need to be stripped off that engine. I'll uh, get with uh, the crew and make sure they get to doing that. It starts up for just a quick second and it immediately shuts down. We've got some more spare parts that we can try out, sensors, wire looms, things of that nature. We'll see what happens. Belt's disconnected. Okay, we just want to pull the compressor off now. We want to pull the compressor out. Adam's there coming above. Got a 12 minute, you 12 minute, uh, off 10. Um, I 
I just tried shorting out the wiring line to the airflow sensor, tried the different combinations and it uh, fired up. So whether I did anything or not, I don't know, but something happened that made it go. Not quite sure what, but. I came here to finish by not taking it home on the trailer. So that's what we're gonna try and do. Do you hear me? Do you copy? Uh, did it puke all the fluid out? All right, well, have you at least uh, stopped the leak? The mailings broke down too. Yeah. So you're at race 761? All right, I don't know how I'm gonna find you. The battery was slamming against the cooler line. Yeah, well, that's fixable, right? One of the transmission lines let free and hosed everything. Um, in my sleepy state, when I double checked through the engine, I didn't look at the transmission lines. We we're having a hard time locating where they are without the GPS. We can't even get a hold of them. I think they have their helmets off. What's going on? Okay, I will meet you at the pit with trans... Yeah. Chase 1 and Chase 2, do you copy? Race 1 is on the way to the pit, they're low on trans fluid, I'm going to the pit. We're gonna get them. Chase 2 to race 1, copy? Chase 2 to race 1, do you copy? Ross, Kevin, copy? Oh, come on, guys. What's up? Hello? How far out are you guys? Okay, we're on our way. They're only they're at 762. They didn't make it very far. We gotta go in after them. Is this gonna make it? I don't know. This is real nasty. It is real nasty. I'm kind of committed now. I don't know what else to do. No, we're here. We're in the wash now, Russ. I'll, I'll hike it. I'd rather hike it than take this. I'm with out. you. I think we're just gonna park right here and start humping. Let's go. We've got to be coming up on 760. Are you in just a big open sandy wash? I don't hear him or see him or anything. I guess we just keep walking. We've got nothing better to do. Maybe another mile. We'll try one more time, Russ. Everybody was jabbering. Do it again. Man, we don't hear you or anything. We can't walk to them. We don't even know where they are. What time is it? 
12, 13. Wow, we got back pretty quick. Man, we were that close. Six hours into the race, Friday evening. For two days now, over two days, we've had a great crowd here at the finish line in La Paz. The race has started Thursday. We've got until about 9.05 Saturday morning until the last vehicle could actually officially finish. The race has uh, still got a long ways to go, and the stock minis uh, should be rolling in. They start at different intervals, so you have 30 seconds between one car to another car. And as the cars come through the finish line, they'll pass the motorhome, which writes down the times it comes through. And that time is elapsed, and they'll line them up according to first place, second place, third place, which gives you the position. Have you heard anything? I wouldn't expect to see anybody. We don't know if we're first or second. With 80 miles to go, we were 10 minutes behind the leader. After 30 something hours, never imagined it would be down to the minute. the FJ and the stock mini come across the finish line. Unofficially, it looks like they are the winner of the stock mini class. I know, I know, I would, The that toughest bomb. race name. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was the best race I ever had. Uh, I do. I can't believe this truck stayed together. <laughs> How far did they finish behind? It's hard to know. Yeah. 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 We should get a fish. It's car. not. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not really. Yeah. yeah you so need to because you don't really know. Hey Jim, how you yes. doing? I'm trying to check on the status of the stock mini. Yes, I understand so. that we've got a real unofficially close uh, finish line here because they came yes. in together. Vehicle number 764, Dan Fresh, 1 over 761, Rod Miller. Unofficially. Uh, yeah. Unofficially Un by unbelievable. 32 seconds. Jeez. Wow. 32 seconds separating after 1,050 miles. That's, that's unbelievable. unbelievable. So Thank you. Appreciate it, Jim. Uh, we're, we're pretty sure we got second by uh, 28 seconds or something like that, I heard. Yeah. There you go, Dan. Get him, Dan. Yeah. At least we brought the FJ home. Finish the race. That's what we came here to do. 
Crazy as it may sound, we made it. That was awesome. Win or not, at least we got here. It's 6.10 Saturday morning. We've got about two hours left before the completion of the Ducati score Baja 1000. Well, we're uh, actually one hour and three minutes away from the we're looking Final. at about uh, 23 minutes before the finish line officially closes here. And I know that we've got some frantic races. Well, after. we've got a minute and 40 seconds right now before this odyssey comes to a close. Uh, it'll go down in history books as one of the toughest, roughest Baja races that's ever been held. The adrenaline's been pumping for 43 hours. Well, <laughs> a little more than that. <laughs> but uh, the chances of the necessaries Coming across this finish line in the next 30 seconds are slim and none. It's over. Thank you. Baja 1000 has come to an end. We went up against the big dogs. We Came almost had really it. Really close. <laughs> what can you do? Live to race another day. Chase one to race one. Are you guys on the move? Yeah, we're on the moon. <laughs> there she is. There she is. Welcome <laughs> back. Oh, we were that close, man. Valiant effort, huh? We were close for all the marbles. I can't believe that. So close. So close. About 100 miles ago, I tore off the battery mount and sheared the automatic transmission cooling line, and we lost training fluid. And the Tran started to slip, so I was just about ready to burn it. I mean, yeah, had to stop. We're calling in for everyone and asking for everybody. Finally, some dude gave us three quarts. Had to ditch the catheter, zip tie it to an ATF bottle, and then poke a hole right there and then blow it into the uh, trans cooler. Dang, that was close. I gotta finish now. actually made it. Yep. We're a little bit late, but you know what? For us, we're on time. This is, you know what it is? This is my victory, I'm being right here. here.